This is the Chrissy Swan Show. In a very weird, mystic uh, style twist, yes. Jack, on the way into work, I was struck, well, not, not physically struck by a <laughs> donut van, no. My focus went straight to a jam donut van in a way that normally it doesn't. And I went, oh. I was on the phone to my friend. I said, oh, I want a jam donut. Yum. I came to work. I said hello to Vicky, as I always do. I walked through to the kitchen. There were boxes of jam donuts. Boxes of the stuff. Boxes. How does that happen? The first thing I did when I was in here was microwave a hot jam donut, Swanee. Our friends at... Do you microwave them? Yeah. I've never had one warm. Yeah, I wanted it hot and a bit melty. Uh, Coles Express, and I think it's Ready Express now, they dropped off all of their sweet treats that they have. that's that child genius. Morgan. Morgan. What's his name, Tom? Bistro Morgan. Bistro Morgan. Well, I tell you what, he knows his way around a donut. Don't you worry about that. And also, Chrissy Swan, you know your way around a mystic ball. And next, we are doing a round of Mystic Chrissy. I'm going to have another one. Do it, do it. Mystic Chrissy needs to be energised and fueled. The Chrissy Swan Show. Now I feel sick. Two jam donuts is too many. Why don't we have a Diet Coke? Just really go rogue. Oh, you are listening to The Chrissy Swan Show on Nova. I'm just aligning my chakras. Oh, yes. Specsavers is helping Chrissy with her mystical visions. Should have gone to Specsavers. Mystic Chrissy. Tell you what, my eyesight has been affected by the overload of dusted sugar that I have just taken in. Is it Shana or Shiana? It's Shiana. Shiana. Yeah. Why do I see Gimpy or Kedron around you, Shiana? Um. I don't know. Are you sh- <laughs> are you shy? No, I'm not. I would mm. say I was probably when I was younger, but not anymore. Stonehenge, why, Shiana? What was that? Sorry. Stonehenge. Do you like rune? <laughs> do you no. Know, <laughs> do you do you even know what runes are? No. I think it's a nineties thing. No. Oh. Women of a certain yeah. age and men and nodding their yeah. heads in the car going, oh, yeah, I know all about runes. What are runes? No. Are they like a variation of prunes? No, it's like a, a Celtic stone. You know, it's just rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can see Trini and Susanna, the iconic pair who used to criticise women I... for what they wore. Do you know Trini and Susanna? No, I have no idea who they Do are. Do you have saggy boozies? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Oh, maybe. <laughs> well, because that's what it could mean as well, because Trini used to put her hand over into these strange English women's bras and hoik them up and go, your tits should be higher. <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> so maybe that's why they're coming through. Got it. Yeah. I can see the world, the, the word unwieldy, and it makes me think, Cheyenne, that you've got... One arm longer than the other or one leg. <laughs> what is this? No, no, I don't. Oh, well, someone around I you... I think they're the same. Someone around I, you does. Yes, that, that could be true. Yes. Um, in my line of work, you're, I have come across that. There you go. See, I can see that person. Yeah, because you're picking up a lot of physical vibes today, I can see, Mr. Yes. Chrissy. And 10-pin bowling. Oh, my... My partner has been begging me to go 10-pin bowling a lot, but I am the worst 10-pin bowler Don't. in the world. Your arm so I'm will, not to do it. Do not go. I can see what's going to happen. Your arm will not come out of that machine that you <laughs> get your, <laughs> your bowling ball out of. Cheyenne, this is a diabolical reading. This is getting grim. Yeah. But I tell you what, Cheyenne, you've got to go easy on the cleaning. You are a clean oh. freak and people do not like it. Okay. Well, I am a bit of a clean freak. I do like my house very tidy. <laughs> you can start by next time someone comes over, don't make them take their shoes off at the door. Okay. Okay. Are you one of start those? There. Cheyenne? I am. Yeah, I don't like shoes inside. No. Shiana, change your mind because there's nothing worse. If your feet happen to smell like dog poo and then you've got to take <laughs> your shoes off, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> okay. Don't put anyone in that situation. One last hit, Mystic Chrissy. Let's go. You 
have a little chip on your shoulder about your level of education? A little. I, I would say I'm the only one in my family that's gone to university. Oh, <laughs> huge hit there, well, you've, Mystic you've Chrissy. Got a, you've got a swagger, not a not a chip, <laughs> Shiana. Well done, Shiana. You have won a VIP spec savers voucher and two hundred and fifty dollars cash. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. The Chrissy Swan Show. At Priceline Pharmacy, members get more. Sister Club members enjoy $5 rewards vouchers, exclusive goodie bags, special member offers and more. Remember to scan your Sister Club card every time you shop. Shop, scan, reward, repeat at Priceline. The Chrissy Swan Show. Are you a prankster? No, I'm not. And something that I love about our relationship is very early on on the last breakfast show we worked on, you and Sam and Brownie, we had a rule that there were to be no radio pranks and no stitch-ups or, you know, BS like that. None of that. On air or off air. Yes. And I do believe that that sort of element on air came from absolutely despising tricks or pranks of any sort IRL. I've mm. never liked them. Yeah. Because I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm too literal. So if someone plays a prank on me, I go, why would you do that? No, I'm hurt and I feel silly. Also, find another way to get a laugh out of me. Like, Yeah, say something funny. Say something funny. You and I are so mad about this, Jack. We have found a Reddit thread. You know, wherever you are, stop and make sure that you do not miss one detail of this story, because I'm telling you, it's going to be one of those ones that live in your head rent free for the rest of your life. Because we've spoken about this for eight days now. We <laughs> spotted know. it eight days ago and have been discussing it just in the office. And even when we're not together, I will have a quiet moment washing the dishes or packing the dishwasher or whatever. And I just go, how is that possible? And how is it funny? All right, here is the story. A woman writes into Reddit and she says, me and my husband have been married for five years. When I was 16, my mum's house had a house fire and it burnt literally everything down, including my beloved pet. That is trauma. She says, I remember my mum and brother waking me up screaming, fire, fire, get up, get up. I had a, a family friend who lost their house in a fire. It is terrifying. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Everything burnt to the ground and gone. All those little memories. I mean, it's heartbreaking. I can't imagine. You'd feel like you have lost a piece of yourself forever yes. because that's, yeah, it would truly change you forever. And I would like to think that if I was with someone, a loving partner whose house had burnt to the ground and they'd had to be evacuated with their, their mother saying, wake up, get out, get out, I wouldn't make the following prank. Side note, the woman that is telling this story is 34 weeks pregnant. She is a month and a half off giving birth to her first baby. Terrifying. And, and also at 34 weeks, sometimes the baby can come early, right? Of if course. Like shocked or of course. something happens. Well, you know, in, in three weeks' time, like what, once you're 37 weeks, that's a full-term baby. So she was basically full-term pregnant, laying in bed with her husband and He yelled in her ear, there's a fire, 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 get up. Okay, so what do you think this poor, pregnant, lumbering woman did? Got the hell up and sprinted for her life. As quickly as she could, she was weeping. Then she went into a full traumatic meltdown at the memory of it. Of course, she had to go downstairs as well, pregnant. She was on the second floor. They're rich. I would divorce him by the time my foot hit the bottom stair. Anyway, the husband's like, oh, my God, sorry, sorry. It was just a joke. And she was like, you know about my history. You know, I'm obviously very upset. He said that she was being overdramatic and that I made him feel like crap for a harmless prank. And there's a quote here from him, and he said to her, Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. It was just a joke. What? How can... I don't... I don't get it. And then eventually he said, What the F? It was just a prank. You're being really dramatic. Oh, uh, he's an... Okay, he's an idiot. The end. Idiot. And also, not only the, the trauma from her previous fire, but the fact she's pregnant in the middle of the night. And also, even if her house hadn't burnt down, including her beloved cat, and she wasn't 34 weeks pregnant, someone tell me how 
yelling at someone who is asleep, fire, fire, get out, get yeah. out, is ever funny. It's not funny. I hope she's left him because all of the comments too. on this thread are really encouraging that. The Chrissy Swan Show. The Chrissy Swan Show. <laughs> Is that bringing back fabulous memories of the estate for you, Jack Charles? You're listening right, to the Chrissy right. Swan Turn off the Show. Light. I saw you mouthing the words that you've known since you were seven. Uh, you're listening to the Chrissy Swan Show on Nova. We're thrilled to have you, but we are not thrilled about pranks. No. Nah. We just uh, regaled you with a story that we found off Reddit. We have not stopped talking about it because we can't understand how pranks are funny. We just don't see they it. They just suck. This poor. Poor pregnant woman, 34 weeks with her first child. Her husband woke her up by yelling, fire, fire, get out, get out, which is stupid at best but traumatic at worst because he... uh, Should have known. He should have remembered that his dear wife had fleed the family home due to fire, lost everything, was Incredibly devastated. By I it. hope she's broken up with him. On 13, 24, 10, we are asking, did the prank go wrong? Because, Swanee, we don't believe they can ever go right. I don't think they can. I just would I would just look at you dead-eyed if you tried something like that. And it's not because I don't have a sense of humour. I just don't get it. Matt? Hey, team. How are you going? Good, mate. How far away from the Eiffel Tower Coffee Club are you right now in Milton? Uh, quite far away from that. Oh. I'm on the on the south side at the moment. Oh, that's a shame. When did the Sorry. prank go wrong, Matt? Tell us your story. Yeah, so the prank went wrong about a year ago. I moved back in with my younger brother, and being brothers, we have just the childhood history of pranking each other, um, and we both survived into adulthood. Um, but it reminded me that he has this really interesting condition where if you genuinely scare him, He's the opposite. Have you seen those little goats that when you scare them, they yeah, freeze they up, <coughs> almost paralyzed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like the opposite of that. So he just loses all control of his limbs. He like literally just turns into jelly and falls on the ground. Um, hilarious is when we're kids. But anyway, about a year ago, I moved back in and I waited at the top of the stairs. I could hear him downstairs for a good 40 minutes. I waited until he got up the top of the stairs and I scared the life out of him. He turned into jelly, but my timing was off and he fell back down the stairs. <laughs> Um, com- completely fine. He's a big unit. Um, it's still pretty funny, but yeah, it was it was a close call there. It would have been funny anywhere else except the stairs. There is one detail there that made me realise that this prank was about to go very wrong. You waited. You lurked in <laughs> yeah. the dark for forty minutes. Look, it's commitment. We've got a history of it. You just be committed to these things. Oh, have you stopped pranking each other now because he nearly died? Not, not at all. If anything, it's just escalated. Oh, dear. Matt, we are going to send you a Priceline pharmacy voucher. I do like that. Now, Heidi, when did the prank go wrong? Um, I was about eight months pregnant with my son, and I got a phone call at home because we didn't have mobile phones back then because he's in his late 20s now. And um, it was my mother-in-law, and she told me that um, my husband, um, she got a call from work, and I, I didn't think they would have rung me, not her. And he, they got a call from home and saying that he had lost his arm at work <gasps> and he's been rushed to the hospital. <sighs> so I've just just shut the phone, just put the phone down and just got into the car and just drove all the way into Brisbane into the hospital. And there was no such patient there. There was no information. I rang <sighs> into work. That hadn't even happened. I've not spoken to my mother-in-law since that day. Heidi, I'm sorry, bad news, laugh. Why? Why? Why was it? Is, that's his mother. Oh, oh, look, I could tell you a million stories, but she... Oh, I'll take them all, let's, Heidi. Let's do a podcast She's on her. ...of work. Just, oh, shocking. No, so, just that was the most vindictive. I could have lost him. I could have lost my son. In absolutely. An you know, just like that woman with the with the fire fire. She could have fallen down those stairs yeah. and I could have lost her baby. When I you, had no... When you heard us talking about that story, did your blood run cold and you just thought, oh... oh. Completely. It froze. It froze. It, I I completely felt for that woman. I know exactly what she would have been going through afterwards, and I, I would have divorced him by the time I hit the bottom stairs. Can too. I I'm, ask? I'm you, can I ask you, Heidi? It's such a juicy story, and we will get to our last caller. I just <laughs> want to know how did the first conversation with your husband go about what his mother had done? 
Uh, I think it was, comp- at first, it was complete shock that she would actually even do that. But he was more worried and concerned about me, that if I was okay, and I said, yes, I'm fine. I said, you need to stand to deal with your mother before I go over and do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> that mother-in-law is not well. That is, I mean, that, that is, is that is a whole other spin-off topic. Priceline Pharmacy a voucher for you, Heidi. Let's finish with Rhiannon. Hi, Swan. Rhiannon. Hello. Hello. When did the prank go wrong? So I should put a disclaimer. It's slightly morbid, but we can all laugh about it now. Mm-hmm. So it was during COVID. We had suddenly lost my dad, so that was uh, very shocking. Mm. Um, I have a fourteen-year-old autistic brother. And he thought it would be hilarious to call me two days after losing my dad, putting on a deep voice and saying, Hello, Rhiannon, where are you today? At the time, I obviously was very, very distressed and we couldn't even understand why he would do that. But now we just laugh about it because did that's he, just how he's... Yeah. Did he just call you on the landline or...? No, off my dad's phone. So it was from my dad's phone. So I had woken in the morning to a phone call that said, Dad, obviously I was still in a world of disbelief and grief-ridden and in shock. What? And your phone went off and it said, said, Dad Dad. Mobile. Yeah. And I've picked it up thinking, oh, it's all a dream. Oh, my God. My dad's still alive. And it's my brother on the end of the line saying, hello, Rhiannon. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I'm sweaty. We've got to get out of here. (laughs) The Chrissy Swan Show. That was Taylor Swift, and weirdly, she appears in clickbait. Chrissy's clickbait. In a roundabout search uh, uh, kind of way, of course, Blake Lively, she's BFF of Taylor. You see them at all sorts of events together. And Blake Lively seems like a really fun, good time gal. She does. I wonder where they met. Yeah. I feel like I should know that as a Swifter crash. Would it have been through uh, Gigi? Because I think they were both friends with Gigi Hadid. I don't Maybe know. a mutual? But they're very, very close. Like, Taylor has written the names of uh, Blake's first three kids into her songs, into her albums. Maybe Taylor's secretly in love with her? <laughs> I mean, look at her, wouldn't you be? <laughs> She's uh, appeared at uh, the premiere of uh, of her new movie, It Ends With Us, which, which looks great, by the way. It does, in cinemas tomorrow. Um, in a dress worn previously by Britney Spears. I love this. It's a gorgeous dress, Swan. I just love this homage. And, of course, Britney appears on the soundtrack, as does Taylor. There's the link there. This song appears in the film. What a song. Every time I hear a Britney Spears song. Do you feel sad? I feel, no, I feel fine. But I feel like, (laughs) I feel like I know that there is someone listening to that song now that really likes to do it when they're very drunk alone at a karaoke bar. Got it. And nobody wants to listen to that at 11.30. No. Do you know what I mean? Do, no. do toxic or go home. Yeah, un- unwritten. Yes, exactly. Just sing unwritten at karaoke, just, please. Just sing unwritten. Is that your go-to? Yes. Karaoke go-to? And obviously, you know, Robin Dancing on My Own is the second, but oh my God. unwritten is my go-to. I remember when you were a child I in know. my house, careening around the living room like a pinball, <laughs> <laughs> singing and dancing to that. Anyway, the credits roll and there is thank yous to everybody that um, has appeared in the film, etc., etc., including Britney Spears and Taylor Swift. Swift. We love that. And Bradley Cooper. I wonder what the connection is there. Gigi again. Yeah, maybe. It must be. They must be all real close pals. You're rubbing off on me if I know whose girlfriend is whose and I whose love that. best friend is whose. I watched uh, a little interview Blake did with Sarah Harris on the Project Swanee. Sarah Harris. I love Sarah Harris. She still gets nervous. With big stars. Yep. You and can I hear can it. see it. Can you yeah. hear it and see it too? Yeah. I want to know if you could choose any Swifty song to soundtrack your life, what would it be? Oh, you can't ask me to pick one song. That's a wild question. That honestly, I'm too. I, I, I love her music too much to pick one song. That's a, that's that feels like an insane. I can tell you my favorite child sooner if you would like to know that answer. <laughs> well, maybe the favorite child and the favorite song is the same. Maybe it's Betty. True. Uh, but you got to pick up on the Sarah Harris little nervous moment there. I know. I want to know if you could choose any Swifty song. Okay, she's got dry mouth. She's trying to be cool. Um, she's probably been up all night with her two sons. Yes. As Swifty is a fan of Taylor Swift, you never refer to the Queen as Swifty. 
This is the Chrissy Swan Show. Oh, hi there. Good news for uh, people that are watching the interest rates. They've been kept on hold, which is great for everybody. Thanks, not for, Koshy. Not for you. <laughs> Mate, things are lean. When did you hear that? I, I follow it. I, I, I go, oh, thank God. You are not, so I'm not funny. Out, I'm not out on the street yeah, okay. this month. Well, but, you know, all I've got to worry about is my credit card debt. I'm not at interest rates yet. Oh, yeah. How'd your cleaning lady go? I'm glad you can afford that. I've said, <laughs> cash, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I've got like little, you know, alerts on Google, interest rates, whatever, you know, am I going to be kicked out, whatever. Anyway, cost of living, like grocery hacks, I'm all for. Yes. Thrilled that MasterChef star Adam Lior, who's gorgeous, shares grocery hacks to survive cost of living crisis. Okay. I'm all ears. I've got the article and I've got my highlighter out. He says there's nothing wrong with packet pasta and frozen peas. Wow. Duh, Fred. Groundbreaking. Who doesn't eat that? Are people not eating that anymore? Yeah, Are absolutely. Are we too good for that? No, Swanee, I love the Rana pasta. Have you had that but before? But that's bougie. I'm a yeah. San Remo girl. Oh, and San Remo uh, ravioli. Heaven, 10 out of 10. Oh, you do all the soft, fresh pastas. You know... There's nothing wrong with dried pasta, Jack. (laughs) Hey, coming up before four, we're going to play Chrissy's Dumpling Discovery. Speaking of food, make sure you've registered via the Nova Player app if you'd like a free trip to Hong Kong. But next, Chrissy's Quizzy, $200 cash is in that bum bag. The Chrissy Swan Show. The Chrissy Swan Show. Guess what else will put a pep in your step? A bum bag. The Chase, tonight, 5 o'clock on 7 and 7 Plus. Quizzy. Well, that's true. The chase will put a pep in your step, particularly if you're Larry Indus. Right. Hey, I hope he gets that gold. Speaking of the gold logies, I ran into uh, Beck Harding, Andy Lee's partner, and she was telling me, because Andy's also nominated. Oh, is he? Yes. And she was telling me, apparently in Australia Zoo, Robert Irwin has put up QR codes around the zoo for people that are go to QR code and it takes them to the TV Week Gold Logie nomination page to nom to nominate him. That's cheating. I know, so he could probably win it. Is he nominated for a Gold Logie? I am so yeah. out of the loop. Who else? So he was... Oh, Swan, have we not discussed this? No. Really quickly. He's nominated, right? He's only hosted the one season of I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here with Julia. Mm-hmm. Lynn McGranger, Irene from Home and Away, came out filthy... Was she? <laughs> because oh my God. he's not been in the industry long enough and hasn't done that much TV compared to the rest. So she was filthy that he's nominated. Does she understand it's the Logies? <laughs> I know. Anyway, very exciting evening for you because you were lucky enough to get an invitation. Don't be mad at me. You can be mad at Sam Payne. You know I am not mad. And also... There is nothing you'd rather not do. I'm so excited. I know. I'm going to be in front of the fireplace not watching the show. <laughs> All right, let's give away a bum bag of 200 bucks cash. Hello, Vanessa. Hey, how are you? Good. As I was leaving the house, I just put the finishing touches on my uh, world-famous butter chicken. What's for dinner tonight, Ness? Spaghetti bolognese, nice and easy. <laughs> do you have a secret ingredient? Everyone's got a secret in- ingredient. Sometimes it's milk, sometimes it's Vegemite. What's yours? You know what? Every single time I make it completely different. And my partner's like, oh, I loved it today. What did you put? I don't know. <laughs> what did you put? Can I recommend that you save the rinds from your parmesan cheese every time you finish it and then throw oh. that in the sauce and then make sure you oh, pull it out before you then. serve it. It's very rubbery. All right. Hello, Erin. Hello. You are in the car on the way to school pickup? Yes, I am. Are you a babysitter or a mama? A babysitter. Oh, God, I used to do that. I hated it. (laughs) Absolute after school. Do you hate it, Erin? No, I love it. Okay, good. I love working with kids. So, like, (laughs) I'm less of their... Makes one of us. Sometimes when they're fighting with each other. I bet. I know, that would be the worst. When my kids fight in front of a babysitter, I pull them aside and I say, you listen to me, it's very hard to get people to keep on turning up. (laughs) (laughs) Question number one, there is $200 cash (laughs) in the bum bag. You can imagine me doing that. Okay, no. Don't make my life harder than it already is. (laughs) Name the actor who was recently pulled out of a pool in a beer. Vanessa. Yes, Vanessa. Vanessa. Zac Efron. Yes. Question number two. Bronx Zoo is in which city? The Bronx? Oh, Vanessa. Yes, Vanessa. Uh, Brooklyn? I'll give it. Yeah, look, it's New York City. Yeah, yeah. Question number three. This is for the win, Vanessa. Four years ago today, this hit. (laughs) What? (laughs) Tom. (laughs) 
Aaron's kids, Aaron's babysitting kids don't, are in the car. Don't say the name of the song. We'll just play it and see if okay, they can guess sure. you. No, they're not in the car yet. Oh, okay, great. Car. All right, yeah. we'll play it. <laughs> From the top, make it drop. That's some wet. Vanessa. Get a bucket, yes, get Vanessa. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> You've won. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's it's a bum bag and two hundred dollars cash. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you've got to celebrate the sporting, like yes. Oh my god! I love how excited you are. How old is your daughter? She's twelve. Oh my god! She just god. turned twelve. I actually said eleven when I called, but now she's like, "Why'd you say 11? We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna send your daughter a Priceline pharmacy voucher as well because I liked that oh, reaction. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. That's gorgeous. How great was that? So good. And how good is this song, Charlie XCX? Turn it up on the Chrissy Swan Show. Better than that one that you just played. <laughs> <laughs> The Chrissy Swan Show. You know that I have um, I have two little furry charges now. At yeah, home. I've got Murphy, of course, who we talk about often, but I've also got two bunny rabbits. They're French Lops. Got them for Christmas Day. Gave them to my son and my daughter. Did they both want them? Very good story. Did you? Was that a leading question, or did you know? Do you know no, what I, it is? I oh genuinely don't know. Okay, so you know, I've got three kids. Obviously. Yeah. And Leo would have no interest. Leo's right? got no interest unless it is, you know, served on a pappardelle in a ragu. <laughs> but Kit, who just turned thirteen on Friday, or Thursday or something, so fresh, freshly minted teenager, has wanted that specific bunny since he was about two or three years old. And I always pulled out that mum line: "Well, if you if you're going to get it, you're going to have to look after it, and you're not old enough." All that sort of rubbish that we lie about. Yeah, because. I remember that he always wanted a rabbit and I wanted to make his Christmas special and I gave him this beautiful rabbit. And then I imagined on Christmas Day handing Kit this gorgeous little bunny and the darkness of my daughter Peg going, oh, where's my bunny? Yeah, of course. So it turned out when I found the bunny for Kit that was going to be ready on Christmas Day, that bunny had a sister. And so I got them both. And... Weirdly, their furs match the colour hair of each child. It was just perfect. Meant to be. So Christmas Day was heaven. There's little bunnies around. Novelty. High end. Like, they could not get enough of these bunnies. And I love that Peg named them after the Kardashian kids. Was that the bunnies? Well, Peg's, Peg named hers Chicago. Chicago, mm. yes. But we call her Chicago. <laughs> Chicago. We go, look at Chicago. Look at Shikagi. I don't know why we speak like a like a showgirl whenever we refer to this rabbit because we're insane. What about Kits? And Kits is uh, Gingy. Okay. They were all over it for a while. Now they're my bunnies. Of course. Would have taken like a fortnight and the novelty wears off. Yeah, it took about three weeks. <laughs> By New Year's <laughs> Eve, they were my bunnies and I was going, hey, anyone want to get some pellets? Maybe feed them? No. And the weird twist is I love those bunnies. Oh. Every morning I go out there and I open up. I've moved them into their uh, winter environs because when we got them, it was sunny. So they were out in the yard in their, you know, fox proof yes. um, thing. It was getting very, it was getting very uh, wet in winter in the elements. So I got a trestle table. Oh my measured. god! I've just lost the will to live. <laughs> I measured it. I know this, you your will, care for these bunnies is too much. You will never. That's how I am. You know <laughs> I'm like that. You will never go through this because you're never going to have children. But no. it's what happens to you. I was down at Bunnings with a tape measure, and I'd taken a photo of the measurements of the hutch. So I've raised the hutch off the ground, and it's undercover. In the barbecue area where we eat. Look, it's a step up from just talking to empty rooms, leaning on the door like an insane person. <laughs> oh, no, I still do that. <laughs> Often just holding a little red bunny. So anyway. you're now feeding? You'd be in charge of feeding? I'm in charge the- of everything. And I got sick of saying, hey, does someone want to feed it? I just do it now. Yeah. And not only do I, like, if I run out of lettuce leaves, I Uber Eats orders just for the bunnies. Oh, wow. They love corn on the cob and the little bags of mixed leaves. Okay. If I'm desperate. But the real prize, and I did mention it last week and you were horrified 
dumpster diving. So at my local fruit and veg shop, this there is, is so, so bad. There is a skip oh, where they wow. throw all the stuff that you know. Anyway, hey, I, have I reckon found the people it. at the Logies heard this talk break last week about you dumpster diving, and they were like, "Cross that woman off this list." What, like that red cup? It's not the <laughs> ultimate dumpster dive. Anyway, I know it's a good day when I get the prime park outside the. Uh, outside the skip and I just go and help myself and I take a garbage bag. But today was a good day. Okay, so, so far so good. I've got the Prime Park for my dumpster dive. The Prime Park is the one that's right next door to it. It never happens. Because is there like usually a truck there? Is it like a loading zone, loading yeah, bay Yeah, well, it's a busy car park, you know, and I got it oh. right there. It means that I can really hoik in there. These are texts I received this morning in form of video. Let's have a look what we've got for the bunnies. Hey, not bad. Cruciferous. They love it. They're mad for a cruciferous What's vegetable. Cruciferous. Cruciferous vegetables are like your broccoli and your cauliflower. Yeah, okay. They're mad for it. The annoying thing about that specific day at the Dunstead Dive was that it was all very low and I couldn't. I had to get. Can you listen to yourself? My whole bum. Was You're not out. well. I was leaning in, but. It was already packed in a box, and if I reached really hard, I grabbed the whole box. This is actually a great haul. That was already in a box, so I just lifted it out. Yum. (laughs) And it had radicchio in it. And just to the left, a little thrown bag of dog poop. That oh, stunning. In. And also 10 points for having Nova on in the background, by the way. That Thank was a good little you. test. Thank you. The Chrissy Swan Show. What a delicious competition this is. Discover Hong Kong with Overlo Hotels and experience a world full of wonder. Book now at overlohotels.com. Chrissy's Dumpling Discovery. Back for her third bite of the Shalong Bao. It's Alana. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, you are getting so close now. you just got to win today and tomorrow and the day after. And then you could be going to Hong Kong to eat all the dumplings that you can find and staying at the Overlo and flying Cathay Pacifica. How heavenly would it be? Oh, I'm dreaming of it. But it's not a lay down misere, nope. Alana. No, you have a, uh, a worthy adversary. Hello, Sal. Hi, how are you? What's your favourite dumpling? When they I think it's the same when, as Alana's. Oh, really? When they open up that bamboo basket and they reveal a Xiaolong Bao. A Xiaolong Xiao Bao. I tell you what though, don't go too hungry. Because you yeah, want to eat it too quickly, and that's a third degree burn. Burn, baby, burn. Also, Sally, great callback remembering, Al- remembering Alana's yeah, favourite dumpling. Good. You're she's good, Sal. Yeah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> then, ladies, may the best dumpling aficionado win. I am going to start reading the ingredients of a fabulous Chinese recipe. And look, no hints, but this is one of Jack and our, my favourites. <laughs> Your name is your buzzer. You must buzz in with your name before giving the dish. Let's go, Swanee. Let's start with some bok choy. Quart it and throw in a piece of ginger, some light soy sauce, a little bit of sugar. Why not? Chinese cooking wine, sesame oil, a bit of chicken broth, garlic cloves. And then let's go for the little blobby bits inside. Lean pork mince, peeled prawns, ah, ginger. Shallots, soy sauce, more Chinese cooking wine, wine, salt, sesame oil, and then let's throw in a big handful of dried egg noodles. Tom, what happens if no one gets it? Ladies, are you there? <laughs> yeah, I'm stumped. I'm stumped as well. I'm slurping it up. It's in a bowl. Um, Alana. Yes, yes Alana. Alana. I'm going to go with um, chow mein noodles. No. <laughs> Sally, do you want to have a guess? I'm going to say dumpling noodle soup. Yes, yes. it is. It is one oh, soup. <laughs> well done, Sal. Congratulations, Tricky. Wow, that was Thank tough. You. I thought that was the easiest dish of the week, Swanee. Me too, and now I want a big bowl of it so bad. Alana, yeah. I'm so sorry you are no longer our carryover champ, but Sally, you will be joining us at this time tomorrow with another opponent, and if you get it right tomorrow and Friday, you're off to Hong Kong, mate. 
Great. Can't wait. Thank Make you. sure you've registered via the Nova Player app if you'd like to play. The Chrissy Swan Show. But first... Chrissy's clickbait. This is all things Sabrina Carpenter. Before I uh, dig deep into the uh, Variety article that she uh, sat down to be interviewed for, where did she come from? Sabrina Carpenter. She that just went poof. A fantastic question. I mean, I feel like for us here in Australia, it was because she supported Taylor on the Eras tour. And no, you... Peg knew her before. But I feel like that's what brought her into proper mainstream. I don't know. I don't know either. That's a yeah. Is it just from becoming a artist and? I don't know. I mean, look, back in my day, you used to come from the Mickey Mouse Club. (laughs) Sorry, Swanee, I've just done a Google. She first gained recognition for starring in the Disney Channel series Girl Meets World. Oh, my God! From 2014 to 2017, so you're dead right. So it's an old school uh, pathway there. She looks like a Disney gal now that... Yes, absolutely. That. Yeah, yeah. This is definitely the summer of Sabrina Carpenter. Do you remember there was all those articles about she was the face of the of a of the Spanx campaign? Skims. Which is, Skims, sorry. Yes. Skims campaign, which is obviously owned by Kim Kardashian, who has a very famous beef with uh, our our queen Taylor Swift. And then Sabrina Carpenter was supporting Taylor Swift, and all of these articles were about oh, you need a permission. To um to appear on this Sabrina had to ask Taylor permission yeah. to work with Kim. Yeah, what fooey, fooey as they used to say in the older days. Sabrina Carpenter said it is absolutely rubbish. Taylor is a rock star. She's so cool with everything. As if I'd have to ask permission. I believe her. So do I. Also, Taylor would want her to win, and that's a great thing for Sabrina to do. This is true. Exactly. Uh, now she's going out with Barry Keoghan. Yeah, he he was Oliver in Saltburn, and he got his schlong out and danced to <laughs> Murder on the Dance Floor. That dude. I I think she should break up with him. I've never thought that she should be with him. Really? I don't like him. I love, really like Barry. I really vibe him. And she like wrote this song about him and he's, he's in the video. Please, please, What's that face for? Don't what don't you like about him? His acting, his appearance, his general vibe and energy, his peace. I don't <laughs> like. All right. I'll say, I'll yeah. say what I don't like. <laughs> please. <laughs> I don't like his little piggy eyes. No, no, no. I don't, <laughs> I don't like the fact that when he hooked up with Sabrina Carpenter, he had a wife and a newborn baby at home. Ah, well, I'm sure the wife's all right. That is a very poor character. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not ideal, is it? No, and it makes me go, Sabrina, if he'll do it to yeah. her, <laughs> he'll, he'll do, do it, it to you. you. Anyway. She waxes lyrical about his star signs, and I lost the will to live as soon as I started reading about it. He's yeah. a Libra, by the way. I don't know many of them. What are you? You're a Capricorn. Capricorn. And I, I do, I have a lot of Aries around me. Apparently that works. Oh, mm. do you? I don't know anything about it. Neither. And uh, last but not least, and I cannot believe this, it must be so frustrating to record an album and really love a song and be told that, nah, we're not going to release it. By, like, the top dog label people. Yeah, she loved Espresso and really wanted it released. And the top dogs were like, no, no. (gasps) It is brilliant. What were they thinking? It's. I said this when it was first released. I think it's one of the best pop songs. I agree. It's so good. I agree. I might have a... I'm feeling dangerous. I might have a coffee at five tonight. Do it, Swanee. Yes. And do it whilst you're listening to Ricky Lee, Tim and Joel. They are up next and we will be back with you from two tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Now check this out. The Chrissy Swan Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.